or any like memorable moment that stuck with you upon your first visit here? Yeah, it's the way that people address you. Uh, so with her being a baker, her having a YouTube channel, I want y'all to drop some things in the comments yes, below of yes. things that she should bake, things Absolutely. that she should try. Also when people say ne, that yes. means like, you know, like right. Like, uh -huh, oh, you know, right, uh -huh, you know uh -huh. what I mean? Because I used to say that when I was younger oh. in the States. And then when I would hear people here say, I was like, this is just further confirmation I'm supposed to be, I'm already speaking <laughs> the language. This is the first time in my life, or at least in a really long time, that I haven't had my head on a swivel. And I mean, his head is always on a swivel, oh, like yeah. he's Mr. Security. If there is a word of encouragement mm. that you can give to the people of South Africa, right, what would it be? Mm. What's up, beautiful people, to another episode of For the Love of S.A. It's me, Ricky Jones Jr. As you can see, I'm not by myself, thankfully, which usually these podcasts aren't by myself. But nonetheless, every now and then, you get the opportunity to be around your rich friends. You know what I'm saying? And uh, we'll get into why I say the Williams family are a part of my rich friend circle. But as you can see, the oh-so-great Z Williams is in the building what today, up, ladies up. and gentlemen. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing fat tablets. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's not often you get to be in the presence of wealth. And so <laughs> when that does take place, it just makes you feel good. It elevates who you are and the uh, smile that you have and the joy that you have as well. Nice. However, I'm excited for this conversation largely because like not only have you shared your journey of being here in South Africa, however, it's a fun one, right? Yeah. Like it's yeah. different pieces of it that just makes me smile and uh, excites me. However, before we get into who yes. you are, right, and all that you are and the richness that you live in. <laughs> In. let's talk about South Africa yes. right and I think yes. coming from the states which mm -hmm. of course if you haven't realized she is from the states New Jersey yes to be specific yes. South Jersey <laughs> yes. to be very specific <laughs> right which she educated me prior to starting that uh -huh. there's a difference between the north and the yes. south the yes. north side of Jersey is closer to New York yes correct however she wasn't in raising <laughs> and, and growing up but nonetheless South Africa let me ask you this question which yes. is a general question that you know a lot of people want to know for people who move to South Africa mm -hmm. is what brought you all right you mm -hmm. and your husband to move to Johannesburg South Africa yeah um I always say that Mabu as I refer to him on my channel yeah um brought me to South Africa mm. because I always knew that at some point in my life I'd live abroad, okay. but it was never the continent, unfortunately. Yes. Like, I mean, I learned now, but uh -huh. um, it was always like, maybe I'll move to France. Maybe I'll mm. move to Paris, do that, live there for maybe a couple of years and then come back to the States. Mm -hmm. um, so coming to South Africa was just completely new. Okay. So he, when we got together, we talked about like traveling and he mentioned South Africa and I was like, Okay, you know, because as Americans, we're conditioned to think a certain way about when it comes the, continent. To the continent. Correct. Right? So it was just never a consideration. So then after we got married, um, we were trying to figure out where we wanted to go for our honeymoon. And we're like, well, let's just go to South Africa. Because prior to getting married, we had talked about traveling here. But yeah. COVID and all of that, because mm. we're a COVID couple. Okay, okay. <laughs> so we were stuck in the house together. Hello. Um, but uh, during COVID, we were just like, okay, we want to get to South Africa at some point. We're also trying to figure out stuff with the wedding, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. So we decided, all right, let's just go for a honeymoon. So we came here for a week in 2022. Mm -hmm. And as soon as we touched down, it was like, we're meant to be here. Wow. Why has it taken us, you know, forever and a day to get here? Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so because like for him, he always knew he was going to come to Africa at some point. OK. Um, and I wanted to start with South Africa. So like with business and things like that. Those are the things that he's interested in and mm -hmm. hoping to kind of foster not only here, but hopefully on the continent. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just here for the ride. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? So, yeah. And of course, you know, with how things go on in the States, it's just it's more peaceful here. Yes. It feels great here. Obviously, yeah. there's lots of issues with lots of countries. Right. Mm -hmm. um, South Africa is not perfect and neither are the States. But there are certain elements, I think, as a black American coming from the States to some place like South Africa that's just, it's just beautiful. Mm. It's just wonderful. And it's just, you can relax your shoulders. Yep. You can breathe a little bit more mm. easily. And um, yeah, but truthfully, he's the one that brought me over here. Otherwise yeah. it would have 
I would have never even made the plunge. There it is. And shouts out to her boo, Paul, hey. right? You know what I'm saying? I, I can't call her, I can't call him that. You know, that was, that was her intro, not the way I see him. But shouts out to Paul for even having the thought, right? Yeah. Because to your point, a lot of us as Americans don't even have the thought of coming to the continent, yeah. right? But thankfully yeah. now with YouTube and so forth and so on, more people are starting to mm -hmm. see what's actually here. Yes. And then allowing for them and giving them the desire to want to visit here. Yeah. Now, you described a feeling that you had upon getting off the plane, mm -hmm. upon touching down here the first time two years ago yeah. that made you say, or made you all say, this is where I need to be. If you could, if you would, please mm -hmm. describe that feeling. Mm. It felt like being home. Okay. So, like, for me in the States, um, like I said, I'm from Jersey, okay? Mm, mm. Um, that's where most of my family's at. And I'm very, very close to my family. So yes. that's kind of like a safe space, always has been, regardless of where I've been in life. Mm. I've always been able to go home and just feel safe, feel yeah. at home. So as soon as we touched down, I had that same feeling. Wow. And that's when I knew, like, mm, God, you're doing something. Because I never thought that I would have a feeling like that from just literally being in a country for like 10 minutes. Mm. And we actually had some issues with our luggage almost getting lost. Mm -hmm. But the way that people were in the airports was just, like people are different here. Yes. And it's not like, a, oh, I'm gonna be nice to you because I'm obligated to. It, mm -hmm. I'm being nice because that's just my personality. That's right. just how I come off. That's good. Um, and so they made us feel safe. We didn't feel like we had to have our head on a swivel because if you've been to any of the airports in the States, they they try to herd you like cattle, yes, okay? Yes. And so it didn't feel like that here. Yep. So it just, it really felt like a safe space. And mind you, we were just in the airport. We mm -hmm. hadn't even experienced other kind of things in South Africa mm -hmm. or even more of the people. We were literally just interacting with staff. And that alone was just like a different, but also a very safe feeling. Like safe is like the best way to describe it. It's like yeah. safe. It felt like home. It felt yes. like... I can just be myself here. I don't mm -hmm. feel like I'm on display. I don't feel like any of that. You know yes. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, it just it just felt like home. Yeah. And so I was like, okay, I really hope that once we leave this airport, this feeling continues. Yes. And and it truly has. I mean, everybody has been so genuinely nice. Like there are lots of things. Obviously, lots of people talk about being an American coming here. That's great about South Africa, mm -hmm. but. I think that we have to really highlight the people yes. because they are they are, I feel like they're the reason why we stay yes. and, or like if we're kind of bicontinental, which is kind of like how we are, mm. um, why we continue to visit yeah. and for longer term visits. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, it just it just felt like home. Yeah, really just felt like home. Yes. And yeah. I love the fact of how you highlight like the people mm -hmm. because that's my thing as well yeah. if i'm ever talking about south africa it is highlighting the people because mm -hmm. the people are unique and yeah. i love the way you put Absolutely. it it wasn't that they were helping you out of obligation mm -hmm. but truly because of who they are mm -hmm. and the love that they have for people yeah. and the unity that they have amongst each other and yeah. i think like that is a feeling that it's hard to express but when you get to experience it, it's like, oh, that's what that is, yeah. right? And to your point of just being in the airport and having that feeling mm -hmm. goes a long way. Yeah, but absolutely. then essentially after stepping out of the airport, it continuing speaks volumes, right? Yeah. Um, now, was there ever an experience that you had upon leaving the airport, mm -hmm. your first trip, that you know made you feel special or unique, right? Mm -hmm. And I ask that because... You know, coming out of the airport for us, we went to our hotel, it was in Rosebank, mm. and being there, you know, people picked up on the accent. It's, yeah. It's inevitable. It is <laughs> yeah. what it is, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> but even beyond that, just having interactions with the people at the hotel, it was like, man, like, I feel like this is my brother. Like, I've been mm -hmm. here for forever. Yeah. Like, it's crazy how we vibe, we connected, we interacted in a way that made me feel like, you already knew me, yeah. right? Has there ever, or was there an experience like that with you mm -hmm. or any like memorable moment that stuck with you upon your first visit here? Yeah, it's the way that people address you. Ah. So there's a lot of, hey sister, hey mama, yes. hey brother. And I'm, we don't get, really get that. You know, Correct. like we might get that within our own community over Boom. on the other side, but like complete strangers, nah. Mm -hmm. Like that was different, but it was also like, you don't you don't see me as just like a stranger you see me as your sister you see yeah. me as your or my husband as your brother like 
that was really nice. And it seems really kind of trivial mm. when you think about it, but I mean, it just shows that the simplest, most trivial, trivial things can be quite impactful. Yes. Because it's like now I call everybody sister and brother because it's like ultimately we're a family. We're a part, yeah. of, part of the diaspora. Like we are a family. Mm -hmm. And that, that really made us feel special. Mm. Um, and like I said, and even just going back to what I was saying about the people in the airport, like everybody was just so accommodating. Like yeah. even before we would speak, before that kind of Americanness yeah, yeah, comes yeah, yeah, out, yeah, yeah. you know, and they're like, oh, uh -huh. um, it was still like a, I just see you as a person. Mm -hmm. How can I help you? Yeah. Or I'm just going to be nice to you and things like that. So, mm. yeah, it was, I feel like the people here have been consistent. I feel like we don't really get that. I mean, we do yes. um, to some extent, but I feel like consistency with people here has been like the most impactful thing. Yeah. But yeah, that, that definitely made us feel special because it was just like, a, oh, you're not just like a sir or madam yes. kind of thing. You know yes. what I mean? It was just like a... Hey, brother. Hey, sister. Correct. You know? so, Correct. And I yeah. love that. I love that you say that. And I think to your point of it not being so much consistent in mm -hmm. the States, it's largely because in most cases in the States, you're responded to based off of either class or mm -hmm. what you look like yes. or what people believe or perceive that they can get out of you. Mm -hmm. Right. And so here there's that unity of to the point that you made just because you're a person. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Because I see you as another individual. Mm -hmm. Even before you spoke, there was the courtesy. There was the love. There was exactly. the attention. There was the going extra mile that people gave to you. And I think Again, we can't harp on it enough. We can't talk about it enough yeah. because, and I say that with the idea that everybody has their own, you know, experience with mm -hmm. it. And I, that's why I love doing this podcast because we get to share our own yeah. unique ways in which we get to experience the, if you will, the Ubuntu, right? Yeah, the I am exactly. because you are type experience. However, you came two years ago. Where did yes. you all stay? Where, where were mm -hmm. you all like? What part yeah. of Johannesburg did you go to? Um, so we came through a travel company. Uh -huh. um, and so they put us up at, I can't remember the hotel name truthfully, okay. but we were in Melrose Arch. Melrose Arch. Okay. Yeah. So that's where we spent quite a bit of time mm -hmm. um, throughout that trip. And it was only for like six or seven days, which yes. obviously is not enough time hey, to come That's here. what we did you know for what our mean? first trip. Yeah, yeah, it was like seven days. It's just kind of like a little taste. Right, yes. Let me just see what it's all about. And yes. then you're like, ah, oh, crap. I probably should have stayed for two more weeks. Hello, hello. <laughs> but yeah, we stayed in Melrose Arch and we love that area. Yeah. Um, really good restaurants. Very true. Go to Rodizio. Okay, okay. <laughs> Which is what type of or food? Istanbul. Um, Rodizio is Brazilian steakhouse. Oh. And then Istanbul's kind of like Turkish mm -hmm. Mediterranean type yes. food. Both are so good. Okay. So good. Oh my gosh. Which is hard to miss. It's hard to yeah. miss as far as like good food here <gasps> in Johannesburg. Let's talk about food since yes. we're here. Let's talk about food. I love food. Name two. Okay, good. <laughs> Crystal does too. So she'll replay and play this part back in the back again. <laughs> but with that, like has there been, let me ask you this, mm. has there been like any types of food that you tried here okay. that you usually wouldn't try back in the States? Oh gosh, yes. Okay. Um, so there are two that I've got in mind. Um, chakalaka. Mm. I've, I've never had anything like that I agree. before in my life. It's, right. it's very different. Yes. I don't even know if there's anything we could really compare to no. in the States. I no. mean, coleslaw would be the closest, but not even really. Remotely. Like, Correct. <laughs> yeah, so chakalaka and then the different types of game meat. Mm -hmm. Okay, so game meat for us in the States is your venison, your deer. Yes. Or maybe moose um, and like lamb. Right. You know, sheep, whatever. Mm -hmm. But over here, I could be giraffe. Could be. I could be crocodile. Hello. <laughs> I mean, they do have alligator over in the States, obviously. Right, and like Louisiana. But yeah, mm -hmm. it's very, very good. But like, those meats have been so good. Mm, mm. <laughs> and it's like, last year, we were, or maybe two years ago, um, like later on in 2022, when we came back, we went to like a safari and like petted a, a giraffe. Okay. And the next thing you know, just a few months back, it uh, was on my plate. Uh. <laughs> so I was just like, but it was so good. <laughs> oh, you paid for gosh. Jamil a, day, like, a couple much. of years ago. 
<laughs> like, I'll see you next time, buddy. Right. Mm. But it was actually good. It was really right. good. It was like just, steak. I mean, I just, like I steak. love food. Yeah, but it was like steak. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was and really, so, really good. It's funny you said that, because <laughs> talking to Paul, uh -huh. I was like, hey, man, we got to go to Carnivore. Yes. Right? We got to go with Doc Nikki and a whole mm -hmm. situation. Yes. And, you know, with her being there, I was like, Paul, like, what was a meat that you had at Carnivore Restaurant mm. that caught you by surprise that you liked? And without blinking or hesitating, he said, giraffe. Yep. And it's interesting you brought yep. it up. But at the end of the day, y'all came down here and had some giraffe. Yes. And said, I'll do it again. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Okay. Like, the meat here is so good. That is true. It's so good. That is true. Like, and that's all meat, right? Yeah. Not even necessarily saying you got to come down here and eat giraffe. Exactly. But all the meat is definitely pure. It's yes. healthier. It yes. has that organic type vibe and feel to it yeah. that you just don't get in the States. Yeah. Unless you go to the higher end stores, restaurants, or grocery stores. Exactly. But exactly. You're right. No, it's... So, giraffe was one of them. Yes. Crocodile yes, giraffe, was another. Crocodile. Right? Chakalaka. Um, chakalaka. Although, I will say, chakalaka is, like, very different for me. It's... I think because for me it tastes a little bit sweet, and I don't uh, have really yes. much of a sweet tooth. Really? Yeah. Okay. I like the salty stuff, but the uh, thing that I just tried that I am so in love with, Ricky, talk about it, is acha, which what? is kind of like um, it's made from like unripe mangoes, like green mangoes, mm. like really really small, and um, it's basically like kind of like a relish or like a pickle pickled yes, situation. Yes. I love fermented. Food, pickles, sauerkraut, okay. stuff like that. Okay. And this is totally up my alley. And I just had it this past weekend. And, and it's called? Achar. Achar. A A T C H A R, I okay. think. Okay, okay. But yeah, you can find it grocery stores in yes. a jar or whatever. But it is so good. Mm. It and is you, so you good. you have it on something or is it like to the side like you a can. side dish? I ate it like on the side. Yes. Um, but I think you could put it in like rice. You could probably put it on like a sandwich if you mm. wanted to. Um, and kind of treat it like a condiment. But... If you're someone who likes salty foods and likes fermented foods, I would totally suggest trying it at least. It yeah. may not be to everybody's taste because like the mango is, is kind of different because okay. of the texture because it's a little bit harder. Mm -hmm. um, oh, but okay. yeah, it is. It's, it's so worth trying. I'm, just, I'm like drooling yeah, thinking you know, about it's it now. <laughs> it's happening. It's all happening. We're seeing it. You're like, you're having flashbacks, yes. which I mean, we could talk about, right? Yeah. Because not too long ago, mm -hmm. you had the opportunity to go on a hike, right? And yes. you had the opportunity to see <laughs> the beauty or another glimpse, if you will, of yeah. the beauty of Johannesburg, oh. of South Africa, because truth be told, like the landscape here is impeccable. It's oh. amazing. Yes. It's diverse, all within an hour drive. Mm -hmm. Truth be told, like mm -hmm. you can drive within an hour and get totally different experiences, oh, yeah. totally different views. Totally different experiences, mm -hmm. right? But nonetheless, not too long ago, you have the opportunity to go on a yes. hike, right? Yes. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that experience <laughs> and our, uh, like, what was that all about? Yeah, so um, Adrian, I mean, mm -hmm. everybody knows Adrian. I That's it. But, Shouts uh, out to the yes. lovely Miss Adrian yes. and Dr. Asai, right? Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> great people, lovely people, yes. Louisiana family. Yeah. And uh, just overall great people. Yeah. So Adrian had told me about the trip. Yes. Um, so we went to Drakensburg, which is in KZN. Okay. Um, so I think it's, I think it's maybe about an hour or two. I mean, I'm sure South African brothers and sisters can correct me, but um, from Durban. Okay. And um, so it's right on the, the park that we were at. It's called Royal Natal National Park. Mm. Huge, huge, huge park. Okay. Like huge park. I mean, picturesque mountains, um, like <laughs> I'll get into the animals. That's why I'm laughing. Uh -huh. Get into the animals, like all of that stuff. It was, it was probably the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life, okay. nature wise. Yes. Like, you could take a thousand pictures and never truly capture its beauty. Wow. You know what I mean? Wow. And I'm someone who loves to be outside. I feel like that's also a way of like worship for those kind of like Bible believing Christian mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like that's a really great way of how like God manifests his himself yes. to us as yes. humans. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I just love being out in nature. So going out there was like, it was a trip. Mm -hmm. Like I'm actually in the middle of editing that video. Okay. <laughs> it okay. was like, it was a trip getting there, but once we were there, it was like, how, how why do we deserve this? You know what mm. I mean? Like, this stuff isn't man-made. This stuff isn't like, like, this is literally bestowed on us from the creator. That's yes. kind of how I looked at it. Yeah. And it was great to just be out there with great company. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like, it was great food. That's where I had tried the achar. Yes. Um, 
and all of that. But it's a huge park, like I said, and it has, they told us over a hundred trails. Now I thought it had like maybe 50, because okay. I thought even that's a lot. Yes. But they were like, yeah, there's probably about 120. But if we're wrong about that, it's at least a hundred. Wow. Yeah, so like we went through a, um, what do we call it? Kind of like an adventure company called okay. Glamping Adventures. Mm. And they have a bunch of different trips that you can kind of choose from okay. um, depending on what your needs are. So she, Adrian had told me about Drakensberg. So I was like, yeah, definitely want to go. Um, so they offered two hikes, um, one that was longer and a little bit more rough as far as the terrain went. And okay. then there was a shorter one that was still quite difficult, at least for me, it was still mm. difficult. Um, but it was still enjoyable, right? Because the landscape and everything makes yeah. it worth it. Yeah. Let me tell you, uh -oh. it was, it was crazy. Okay. Because <laughs> Both of them or the yes, one that was harder? Yes. Okay. So I didn't go on the harder one there. Yes. So I went with a group of 15 people. Mm -hmm. And so the majority of them went on the longer one because yes. they heard that the views were great, blah, blah, blah. But everywhere in that area, the views the are going to be great. spectacular. Yes. So I was like, well, I'm not really working out like I normally do, so I'm going to go on the shorter trail. <laughs> nah. Hey, well, you know yourself. You're honest with yourself. Look, okay. it, was, it was insane. It was just inclined. Wow. It was paved, so you didn't have to, like, climb okay. over rocks or anything. So that was nice. Yes. Okay. I would suggest going on that trail. Yes. Um, but it was all inclined. Mm. But so going up, I don't, I don't know if I can say that going up was easier than going down, because mm. going down... Your legs were on fire, okay. on fire. Okay. But the views were amazing, mm. amazing. Like just absolutely gorgeous. The weather was perfect, um, all of that. And it was just really nice to explore a different part of South Africa because we were in a completely different province. And you know, I've only been in Houting yes. um, since I've been here. So it was really nice to get out, explore, of and obviously do something that kind of, you know, speaks to my aesthetic. I just yeah. love being outside. Yeah. Um, and then that night, so everyone comes back, the bit, the longer trail, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll talk about that for a sec, was brutal. Oh. Um, people would come back and they were limping. <laughs> really? People immediately took their hiking boots off, what? went to go sit down, lay down. They said it was horrible. Huh. So it's, was yeah. that one, was it paved? No. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking <laughs> no. that. Okay. At some point they had to like, I think, scoop on their bottoms um, to get through some of the terrain, climb over rock. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, so that's for the hiker me. hikers. That's for the hiker yeah, hikers. Yeah, 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 and yeah. I used to be like that person. Okay. Um, I love camping. The type of camping I'm used to is like no provisions. Mm. You're hiking for 10, 15 miles over a course of like a weekend. So like, you know, you got to get to your next campsite right. before sun, sundown and all that kind of stuff. That's what I'm used to. Huh. But they did all that in a day. I think it took them eight hours to hike. Eight hours? <laughs> they put in a day walking? shift, Ricky. <laughs> there and back. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. We after oh. our hike, I think for our hike we we were there for I don't know, maybe three or four hours. Wow. But we were also really taking our time. Because yes, we yes, just yes. wanted to take it all in. Right. But yeah. Eight hours. That's a whole nother level. It is. That's a whole nother level. It but they is. did it. But they did they it, they did. made it, and, and they, they probably wouldn't do it, it again. Oh. They said it was worth they it. They said it was worth okay. it. But they definitely said we would never do it again. <laughs> They would never do it again. Well, they were glad they did it that yes, time. Yes, exactly. Right, right, right. It's, it's like that. It's like that. It's yeah. that balance. But, but you, you were saying something about the nighttime. <sighs> yes. Okay. So I'm someone that, okay, we're like in wild animals hoods, right? So yes. I'm, I'm going to try my best to respect them, all that, right? Okay. One animal that I do not mess with mm. is a primate. And that's because they have two sets of hands, okay? okay. They could grab me by the neck and yes. slap me with like another okay. set of hands. You okay. know what I mean? Okay. I'm just... Not yeah, down with you know, and then there's the movie Planet of the Apes. Like it's all of that. Yes. Okay. Talk okay. to me. So we're sitting just chilling, and all of a sudden we see a baboon come from the mountains to one of the facilities that's <laughs> at the place. Yeah. Wait. In so the trash time cans. out. Time out. Time out. Time out. Okay. So you just painted this picturesque scene. Yes. You talked about the serenity, <laughs> the views, the ambiance of what it's like to be out there. Two courses that you mm -hmm. had the choice of going down. However, you, you, you skip the scene, okay? Yeah. There's the scene of your living quarters and arrangements and things mm, like that. Yes. So I'm thinking you all are in this, like, quote unquote, protected area, right? Like, it's just nature out there, <laughs> mm -hmm. but not like with people, or not people, but inhabitants yeah. out there living in nature. However, you all are in an active 
community, mm -hmm. ecosystem. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and so there's no like walls, fences, or barricades between you and nature. Mm -mm. Okay. But you're in a tent or are you in a like place where there's a door mm. and a lock? Yeah. So... Um, all right, so I'll back up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, paint that scene. I'll, I'll paint the scene. All yes. right, so this is a campsite, right? Okay. So without all of the tents there, yes. it's just land. land. It's just land, but then they also have um, bathroom facilities so yes. you can take shower baths, things like that. Okay. So those have doors and windows. Yes. What we stayed in were tents. Like with real tents, like pitch it in the ground type tents. Real tents, but they were bigger because, I mean, I shared it with Adrian, okay. so obviously we need to have a little bit of space. Um, but there's no locks, zipper entrance, yes. Velcro entrance. Like, right on, I'm here now. No locks, no nothing, okay? Okay. And there are just these tents everywhere. All right, so we're here. Okay. Oh, snap. So then you have your, your kind of little community of tents where everyone's staying, and then on either side are the facilities for the bathrooms, yes, and then there's like a little structure for um, where they prepare food, like a yes. little kitchen, okay? But everything else, for the most part, is open and <laughs> no locks so oh, we're oh. after our hike so the guys from the um longer hike hadn't come back yet okay. so i don't think they had seen this um but we're just sitting there chilling out you know because our hike is is done and getting ready to eat lunch and we just see the baboon over by oh. the further <laughs> bathroom so of course i'm like <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I, I'm not going to get its attention by walking or running anywhere. So I'm just going to sit here. Mm. So I'm trying not to freak out because, again, I don't That's do monkeys. That's not your thing. No. Um, and I got some footage of it. But, yeah. So we saw that. I also don't do deer because when I was in college, I got huh. chased by deer okay. <laughs> all okay. the time. Okay. So oh, I wow. don't do deer. There was a deer literally from here to the counter over here. What? Um, but it was a little baby, so I wasn't too terrified yes. but that was a little bit earlier than the baboon okay. so we saw the baboon it was just trying to get in the trash look for food as it as it would mm. and then one of the people in the park came and just started throwing rocks at it to okay. draw it back into the mountains yes but that's not where it ends so huh. of course you know everybody's hanging out you know roasting marshmallows and everything later on in the night once yes. everybody's back kind of recounting their days and we all go to sleep tell me why at like 4 30 I hear, I'm, I'm going I'm to imitate the sound. It's going to sound ridiculous. But okay. it's like, rah, rah. <laughs> oh. my eyes shot open. Rightfully so. And I so. was like, there's monkeys outside of these tents. And it, I heard that all night. And everyone else is sleeping soundly, oh. all that. And I'm like, I need daylight to come <laughs> soon. <laughs> because I'm so worried that, yeah. like, because it's not locked, right? We're in a canvas yes, tent. Yeah, yeah. And they have two sides of hands. They Hello. can figure out how to get in. That is true. So I was just worried that they were going to get in. Mm. And so one of the other campers that was there said that they had heard the noises and thought it was a mountain lion. I was like, okay, that doesn't make me feel any better. No. Um, so then I had sent a chat to, because um, we had a group chat going on yes. with all the campers. I was like, I know y'all heard the monkeys last night, mm -hmm. or those animals. And they're like, oh, yeah, it's baboons. are really friendly. And I'm like, I don't know that. Correct. It's like someone coming to, you know, going to someone's house and they have a dog and, say, and them saying, oh, they don't bite. Like, I have a dog. Yes. But, like, I'm not. He has teeth. Like, uh -huh. he could totally bite. Like, I'm not, I'm, I don't want to set that fear in anybody's mind. Right, right. So when they said that, I was like, yeah, they don't know how I feel about, oh, about monkeys. Mm -hmm. But... Yeah, I heard that all night, and people were saying all these different animals, and I was like, I am, I know it was a monkey. And then as soon as I said baboons, I said, mm. and then when daylight came, and I opened up the tent, baboon was over by the no. trash cans again. <laughs> yeah, so it was a trip. the baboons probably was there all night, like, yes. scavenging, mm -hmm. looking around, yes. living their life, you yes. know what I'm saying? Because they out, they, they at home. Exactly. You're in their home. Exactly. At the end of the day, so like, yeah, you heard us talking. Yeah, mm -hmm. you heard us communicating. Because we out here doing what we do. Exactly. Y'all over here where we do what we do. Yeah. Like, but nonetheless, like, in it all, with it all, that was the first night, right? Yes. And how many nights did you all stay there? So the, the night of the hike was the second night. Okay. We stayed there two nights. Two nights. Okay. Yeah. Two nights yeah. total. And essentially, would you recommend that to others? Oh, right? absolutely. Even those that are scared of monkeys <laughs> as yourself. <laughs> But yeah. you love animals, right? But you're scared of monkeys. Yeah. Would you still recommend it to oh, them? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Like, the hikes were worth it. 
the scenery was worth it. Um, the organization itself, like the activities that they had for us, it was a short trip, so we couldn't do you know everything. At all. Correct. Um, but it was still like it was. I would totally go back. Mm. Um, it was a really, really great experience. And like I said earlier, it was really nice to be able to explore a different part of South Africa because we've just kind of been held up at our house for yeah. so long and not really been able to explore. So I would totally go there and maybe even try some of the other trails that okay. are there too, because okay. I do like to hike and, and all of that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was totally worth it. I mean, seeing the animals, once, once you kind of realize that they're not really there to mess with you, they're really just to get food, mm -hmm. then you can kind of relax a little bit. Yeah. I'm still on edge. Of course. Still on edge, because like a couple of us went on a walk around the, the campsite just to kind of kill time. And then you heard it again. Uh, and so instinct just caused me to turn right around. Hello. Um, but it was still like, they're watching, like they, we could see them watching uh, us, watching well, them. Well. <laughs> um, but they weren't trying to attack or anything like that. Like yeah. most animals, right? Like right. they're only going to really attack if they feel they threatened. They feel, correct. But all home, homeboy wanted, and even the deer wanted, was just food. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. That's all they really wanted. Gotcha. So can't, can't really hate on them for that. No, no, you know no, no, I mean? no, because we all have to eat. Exactly. At the end of the day, we all need to eat, and exactly. we all need to drink water at the end of the day. Right, And so right. you definitely yes. have to, if you can get the details to, we call it like glam, glamping yeah, or something Yeah, it was called like Glamping that. Adventures. Glamping Stand Adventures. Country, if you yeah. can give me that info, I would love to put it in the description, right? Yeah, Because absolutely. some people may be listening either from South Africa mm -hmm. or now have moved here or that are visiting here yeah. and they may want to take part right and, sh and experience yeah. nature in its beauty <laughs> right and uh have the various cuisine now even out there you did have the mango mix i'm gonna call it yes uh was there anything else that you ate out there that you wouldn't usually eat no it was city? it was pretty standard okay, cool. um like we had chicken wings and sausages yeah. egg, you know kind of standard breakfast yeah, things yeah, like yeah. that yeah the achar was really just the most different thing okay um that at least the Americans yes. hadn't had. Because there was only about four four Americans and then the rest were South Africans, as nice. far as I know. Yeah. So um, I'm sure that they might have had that before since it's mm -hmm. a South African thing. But um, but yeah, the meals were pretty standard. They were really mm -hmm. good though. But it's like when you're hiking or outside, like when you go to the beach or whatever, I feel like your appetite just grows. So everything is, is just great. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. the food was really, really good. It was all homemade. Nice. Um, and all of that, but yeah, it was really, really good. I dig that. Really good, yeah. I dig that. So with you being within the Houteng mm -hmm. province, yes. if you will, uh, what would you say is your favorite area or location mm. that you've been within Houteng? Ooh, it's probably gonna be Rosebank. Okay, Yeah. I love Rosebank as Rosebank well. Rosebank reminds me a lot of Philly, uh, oh. or Philadelphia, yes. Pennsylvania, for those that don't know. Um, I used to live in Philly. I went to school in Pennsylvania, just like 35 minutes west of Philly, mm. like the center city. Um, and then after college, I had moved to center city, to okay. Philly. And um, so that's what it reminds me of. Even though I'm not a city girl, yeah. right? Ricky had said I'm from South Jersey. South Jersey right. is very rural. Okay. That's the difference between South and North. North is closer to the city, so it's going to be more city-like. South mm -hmm. is more rural. So I'm used to farmland, space, things like that. Mm. So I'm not really into the city. But when I moved to Philly, I loved it. Mm -hmm. And that's what Rosebank reminds me of. Mm. Like everything is within walking distance yes. once you're down there. Yep. Um, the restaurants are really good. Obviously, we talked about food. Correct. Or, you know, it's just, you can't go wrong with the food. You can't go wrong. I've never had any bad meals in Rosebank. Likewise. Like not one. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I just like how convenient it is mm -hmm. um, and really just the vibe. Mm. You know what I mean? Like a couple months back, I went to an art show with a friend of mine and just to know that like you can do that, it just feels very Philly like because the art scene is very big in Philly. Okay. Um, and I would go to galleries and whatnot all the time. So it was nice to kind of have that familiarity yes. in a different country. Um, again, kind of going back to that feeling of being at home. Mm. That's another way that it's made me feel at home because it, it made me feel like I was back in Philly. Yeah. Like you couldn't, you could play, you could take a photo of certain areas in Rosebank and show it to somebody that doesn't know South Africa and they would probably think that it's somewhere in the States. Wow. Yeah, that's so very true. Yeah. yeah so true. I, I love Rosebank. I do too. I love it. That's my go-to spot and I think you yeah. hit all the various reasons as to why. Yeah. Why you can't miss on the food. Mm. Everything is walking distance. Yes. That was where we landed, if you will, when mm. we first okay. visited yeah. Johannesburg and uh, we were right at the Voco and it was right there in the mm. thick of it. 
it. Yeah. And so, like, to your point, you could walk out and have all different types of cuisine. Oh, yeah. There's that. Absolutely. But then you can't miss. Like, my, one of my favorite restaurants here is My Diner, which is located. Oh, I haven't been at, there yet. Oh, my gosh. We shall. Yes, we, we shall. shall. <laughs> we shall. Like, we shall. There's anybody that visits or comes, we take them there. We mm, go there because okay. that's my spot. Yeah. Uh, which is like a Indian type food. Oh, I would say. I'm sold already. And so, sold. like, great wings, great rice, mm. great drinks. Um, just assorted, assorted uh, menu. It's a halal restaurant. So, okay, I mean, good. like, you can't go wrong type yeah. deal. Okay. So I love Rosebank. I'm surprised yes. you didn't say Melrose Arch. And I say that mm. because yeah. usually, if you will, people who have visited here from the States, their first point of entry is usually their go-to spot because it reminds mm. them of like when they first touched down. Ah, okay. However, I see, I see. I'm with you. Long yeah. as you know you said Rosebank, so you won me. Rosebank is number one. That's it. Like there's so much to explore. I know I'm like probably missing some areas, but like yeah. it's kind of like a one-stop shop. It is. Like, you, you can't you can't go wrong with you Rosebank. Can. You can just if, land there and you'll be good to go. You'll be good to go. <laughs> and you can venture out from mm -hmm. there through Ubers or whatever, whatnot, yeah. or even the How train. Mm -hmm. You can take that from the airport there. Exactly. And so as people ask me time and time again, where do I think they should stay at when they come? I always say Rosebank. Yeah. Like that's, that's Rosebank, Rosebank, Rosebank. Stay there in the thick of it. Yeah. Right. And you, you won't be disappointed. Oh, yeah. Be told, whether Absolutely. it's a hotel or Airbnb. Because I know Dr. Asad and Adrian, mm -hmm. they stayed in an Airbnb when yeah. they visited. And that's their go to spot as well. Yeah. Like, Rosebank is just where it's it at. Is. At the end of the it day, is. it's where it's at. So <laughs> I get it. I love it. And, you know, we're there. However, now we're going to tap into the, the D side of things. Okay. Now, you all have moved here from Texas, mm. right? Uh, you and your great husband, Paul. <laughs> you all came from Texas where the saying is, everything is big in Texas. <laughs> and I think you can kind of get where I'm going. As I said at the beginning, mm -hmm. you know, I'm excited, I'm smiling, I'm giddy, mm -hmm. and I'm joyful because I'm in the presence of my preach friend. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Largely because they have come over mm -hmm. to Johannesburg and have left a mark, right? And the mark is not only did they come here, mm -hmm. not only did they move here, but they moved here in a grand way in that <laughs> the colossal home, oh, a.k.a. the palace is what I call it. <laughs> They don't know. I call their home the palace, largely because they have levels. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> <clears throat> levels, right? And right off their room, you know, master bedroom, most mm. people, I don't say most people because that's mm. a lie. Some people are blessed enough to have, you know, a balcony or a step out <laughs> area where, you know, take two steps, have a cup of joe, have a cup of coffee or mm -hmm. tea if that's your thing. Mm -hmm. However, they have a whole balcony. They have a whole patio. <laughs> they have a whole space where, I mean, you can do everything out there. But nonetheless, <laughs> they made a move, right? They moved into a lovely home, great home, the palace. You know, if you have the, <laughs> the blessing palace. or the opportunity to go, <laughs> you'll see why I call it the palace. However, y'all moved to Joe Burke South, mm. right? And uh, not only did you all do so, but now you've talked to Miss Veronica. Mm. I don't know if you remember mm -hmm. her and yes, uh, Mr. Yes. Eric. Have them even in the thought mm. of, we need to move down okay. to Joe okay. Burke South as nice. well. Nice. However, Joe Burke South is great, right? One of the things I love about the South are the views. Right. Mm. Yeah. Really um, nice views. The views are amazing. Like the views are picturesque, mm -hmm. and it's Johannesburg. Right. <laughs> yeah, like it's a little bit yeah. everywhere. However, what led you all to move to Johannesburg South? Mm. Let me ask that. Yeah. So I want to clarify some things because, mm. like, he and I are quite like private when it comes to like the house and everything. Okay. But um, but I will kind of like you know give a little little bit of detail. Yes. So, um. It's, oh, it's been such a journey. Okay. It's been such a journey. It's like I don't realize it until I start talking about it. Yes. Um, and yeah. it's also on the channel, right? Yes. Which we, yes. We'll it's talk the about channel. the channel. But we'll yes. talk about that, right? Yeah. Make yeah. sure y'all go to her channel. Yeah. Denise Williams is the name yes. of it. Yes. Uh, though she is affectionately known as D. And yes. I'll put a link in the description down below about or so that you can link up with her YouTube yeah. channel. Yeah. However, you said it's been a journey. It has. So... For us, like, we haven't moved, like, I guess, like, for a technicality, we haven't moved, because for us, like, living here means that we have permanent residency. Okay. So it's like, we, we feel like, um, 
because we have like temporary visas, mm -hmm. it's like y'all could kick us out anytime. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But we still do have a house in the States. So that's yeah. why I say like we're bicontinental because mm -hmm. it's like we're still in Texas. Like we still have a house in Texas and yes. all of that. Yes. Like we haven't sold everything. Yes. Um, and then came here like a lot of people do. Yeah. Um, I think that that's a little bit different because I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of people are like, ooh, South Africa, I'm going to just uproot my life. Mm -hmm. And it's like we're... 50-50. Okay. Um, but, yes, so we're in Joburg South. Yeah. And we like it there because it's quiet. He and That's I are both true. not city people. Okay. So we we just like the quiet. Mm -hmm. um, it's just very, like, very, very nice views. I mean, there are even really nice views here in Santon. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, it's eerily quiet, but it's, <laughs> like, but it's the best kind of eerie, you know, eerie. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Um, but we were, when we were looking at houses right because we wanted to like invest in property and things here yes and so obviously we want to have like a home base mm -hmm. wherever we invest that's not just in south africa okay um more to come uh, yeah I was about you to know say, you'll see it on more, our channel more to you'll come you know what i mean we wanted to make sure that like we could work from anywhere pretty mm. much especially here um, so we actually came here for a month in 2022 just to make sure that things were okay, like with my job and everything like yes. that, as far as just like connecting. Yes. Um, cause it's like, you know, you get used to a certain way of doing things when you're coming from your home country Yes. and you want to try to emulate that somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that was a really big piece for us to be able to be able to make that move to, okay. Okay, we want to look for some property here and have that be our home base here in South Africa. Mm -hmm. So um, after that month of being here and things were kind of working smoothly for work, we were like, okay, let's start looking at properties and all of that. So we had talked to Kim and Antoine, which I don't know if they've been on your channel. Not yet, no. It's, it's only a matter of time. You know, we've been messaging. We've been messaging. So this is a reminder. I'm going to have to message him again. Cool guy. Cool mm -hmm. guy. Great couple. A great man. So he'll yeah, definitely be on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're actually the ones that encouraged us about um, Joburg South. Makes sense. Yeah. Because they, yeah. they keep doing that. They yeah. keep pulling others they, to the they South. They really do. They uh -huh. really they're do. They're ambassadors of the South. Yes. Um, so we were looking at houses down there and, um, we, we only looked at like two or three Okay. and there was one that we were like completely sold on. Mm. Okay. Not the one that we have now. Okay. So that's why it's been a journey. Yes. Um, but some things went down where we had to get out of the contract with that. Okay. Um, and so then of course, like as we're going through this process, mind you, we started the paperwork while we were here in South Africa, went back to the States to kind of gather up all of our things, you know, finances, things mm -hmm. like that. Um, try to figure out, all right, we need, we still need to live in the States so we can't just like uproot everything. Yes. Um, and figure out all that stuff. Correct. Right? So over the course of like four months, we, um, were kind of gathering all of our things so we could come here. Mm. Everything was going smoothly up mm. until we got to South Africa. And we realized that we weren't going to get into the house as quickly as we thought. Gotcha. So, um, <laughs> so then, like I said, we had to, we ended up having to get out of that. Yes. Um, and then in the midst of all of that, we were buying things for a house, yes. like okay. refrigerator, washing okay. machine. For dry, that like, house. For that house. Yes. So things were piling up in the apartment that we were staying in. I mean, okay. we had no space. Yes. Um, and so we knew that we needed to start the process again to yes. look for a piece of property. So then we came across a bunch, right? We, we were looking all over the place, even looking up here. Like we looked mm -hmm. in Bryanston, places like that. Mm -hmm. um, we liked a lot of the homes. Some were a little too expensive. Some mm -hmm. were just like not what we were looking for. And then we stumbled upon this property. And when we got to it... <laughs> <laughs> it was like, whoa. Now, one thing I will say, especially for people who are watching from the States, yeah. if they're looking for property, especially if they want to buy, um, is that the homes here are large. Like for yes. what you can afford, they're large. Yes. Um, like even if you are renting, like it doesn't really matter. Like the homes are large here and that's not... We do have big houses in the States, but they are so unattainable. Correct. You don't even look at them. Correct. You know what I mean? Correct. That are comparable to the ones yes. that are here. No, exactly. so very true. Exactly. So we're looking at houses that are within our price range that if we were looking back in the States, it, it would be a, a postage stamp. <laughs> yeah, you know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. So we're looking at these houses. They're huge. And we're just like, okay, we don't need a huge house. Um, we don't have any kids yet. Mm -hmm. And we don't plan on having a huge family. So it was just like... 
okay, this is just a default, right? Yeah. This is just what we saw. So then we came across the property and it basically had everything that we would probably ever want in a house, truthfully anybody, speaking. <laughs> anybody, for that matter, okay? It's the palace. <laughs> it, is a, it, it is a spacious house, I will say that for sure. Um, <laughs> it's like I try to be modest about you it. You know, and it's fine. That's why she's here today, okay? Rick, you got to call it out. You got to call it out. Rich is rich is rich is rich. <laughs> rich is rich. Nah, we ain't got money like that. <laughs> if we did, the house would be made over. Mm. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's an older home. It's been sitting for a while, so there's a lot of stuff that yeah. Has to be done. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure that some of your viewers might have seen the hole in the ceiling and all of that stuff. You know? And we're constantly having people come in and out to try to sort all that stuff out. Yes. And it will, you know, all in due time. Correct. But um, but yeah, it's it's been a journey because for one, you're purchasing property in a foreign country. Yes. So it's like number one, you got to make sure you have the money if yes. you're buying. If yeah. you're renting, obviously it's different. Mm -hmm. But if you're buying, you have to have fifty percent. Okay. Fifty percent. That's good. It's, 50% it's of the cost of the home. Of the cost of the you home. You have to have it in cash mm -hmm. in order to start the process. Exactly. Okay. Like you cannot, you cannot go any further without that deposit. You have to. And that's nice. for any foreigner, not just from the States, but just any foreigner. Yep. Um, so that was fine. Okay. We had that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, but even for this house, it was still a little bit of a battle because we were kind of going toe to toe with another foreigner, mm. like someone I think that might have been from Europe okay. that was also interested in the property. And they actually wanted to pay for the house in complete cash. Like okay. we had, like we finance, you yes. know, all that because we're normal human beings. That's it. But, <laughs> um, but you know, this person had the disposable income to be able to pay for this house outright. Yeah. And um, so we were worried that, oh man, if they get this house, we're going to have to go through this again. But luckily, thank you, God. Right. We we came out on top there and, it is. and all of that. But it's if anyone is interested in buying, like you you have to talk to people who have done it. Yes. I think that's the best <laughs> way yes. to kind of get a sense of what to expect. Yep. Expect the unexpected yeah. because that's where we're at right now. Mm. We even though there's a lot of issues and you know, I talk about that a lot on my channel. Um we're still very blessed and very grateful that we had the opportunity to not yeah. only come here and kind of have a home base, as I like to call it here in South Africa, but just to be able to purchase that yes. type of property. Um, and I feel like people can kind of, I mean, okay, unless you've been to the house, you can't really get a sense of like the size, but I think it also just shows how affordability can work for someone who That's has true. who comes from a place that has a stronger currency like yes. let's be real about it yep. right like yep. the dollar goes far here and right. that's, that's a benefit for us it's, exactly it's great um but that doesn't mean that with the american dollar that we're just out here just shelling out money just to yeah no 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 that's not the goal that's <laughs> we not the, budget everything. everybody's goal <laughs> is to keep as much money yes. as you can in your pocket <laughs> however things cost what they cost they do so you have they to do. pay what yep. they cost in order to receive what exactly. you want and that's exactly. that's what it is like yes. it's not our goal to just shell out mm -hmm. above and beyond like yeah. no yeah. We don't want to. We exactly. want to. That's that's a thing. Yeah. That's a thing. But that's the truth. You're and right. That's, and that's something, too, that we've kind of run into that can sometimes be a little frustrating when mm -hmm. you're communicating with people, especially tradesmen, like people who have come to the house. They're yes. like, oh, if you can if you can be in a house like this, then you can afford everything and anything. Mm -hmm. And it's like. Try not to make assumptions about people. Like, yes. I can understand why it would be easy to do that, right? Because the house is nice and all of that. Mm -hmm. It's spacious, whatever. But at the same time, like, he and I budget everything. We save money. We try mm -hmm. to be very smart Clearly. about what we do with our money. Clearly. And, um, and, you know, so that, like you said, so we can keep a little bit of money in our pockets. That's it. But, um, but yeah, I think there's a misconception that because we're American or because we're from the UK or Europe or wherever, mm -hmm. that we just have all of this money that we're just going to throw away. And it's right. like, no. no, in the States, a lot of us are <laughs> cash poor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? That's it's true. like, you know, so it's like, that's why, you know, we're able to come over here mm -hmm. and, you know, buy some of these larger homes because it's like, they're literally within our budget. Yeah. Like if we were looking for homes in the States, it would be the same budget. Correct. We just wouldn't have as big of a deposit. That's, that's, that's another thing. Yep. 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 Or <laughs> big of a home. Exactly. Larger, right. Exactly. And so I love that. I love that you said that you're actually 
the first guest that I've had that has bought a home. Oh, right? really? And so that's fun. That's fun that you have this perception mm-hmm. and perspective and experience yeah. because it, it will aid others. Now, yeah, did you do a video? I don't remember seeing it, mm. but did you do a video talking about what went wrong on the other deal? Oh, no, not yet. Okay, not yet, but you <laughs> will yet. potentially. Will. Okay, because it will be of aid. Everything. It'll be an aid to others yes. that are because, uh, you know, as we know, there are people that are looking to make the move here yep. to retire here and things like that. And purchasing a home is something yeah. that they want to do. And so that information will be of aid to them. So definitely yes, come forward absolutely. to that one coming forward. Now, you all have shipped some things, right, yes. from the states yeah. uh, to this side. Now, like you said, you bought the appliances and mm-hmm. whatnot and stored them in your apartment yep. until you <laughs> yeah. had the opportunity to get them into <laughs> a home, yeah. right? Uh, but what was the shipping experience like mm-hmm. for you all shipping things from Texas or the states to Johannesburg? Yeah, so we still have things coming from the states. Mm-hmm. So that stuff hasn't come here just yet. Um, so that's, that's like a whole, other, I'm going to preface this right now. Okay. Ricky's audience. Talk about okay. it. There's a whole lot of stuff going on with Denise and Paul's stuff, but we'll get into that okay. on the channel. But we How do have long stuff. has it been afloat? We'll call it. You're going to be surprised. It's been okay. like a year. It's been a year. A year. And it should really only have taken maybe two months. It's been a, so wait, time out, time yeah. out. So you st- you, you're, you I'm packaged. doing a whole lot of stuff on today's talk. Uh, my lord. My lord. So you, you package this mm-hmm. furniture, if you will, or items or whatever, yeah. whatnot. And it's been a year. It's been a year. That you haven't seen it. That we haven't seen but it. But yet are awaiting its arrival. Mm-hmm. My yeah. lord. Okay. It's, it's a whole lot. It's a process. Um, it's a whole other video. Yeah. But... It's we're in the process of getting that stuff over here. Yes. Um, and that's just like random stuff like clothes, shoes, right. and things like that. But right. it's still like our stuff. You it's know? still your stuff. Over here. It's yeah. still your, and, yeah. it, and here's the thing. We've even had we've ordered things from online mm. that we well, won't say we it's me. Crystal <laughs> has received all her stuff that she's ordered online. <laughs> I have some clothing that I order online that yeah. is yet to be in my hand. Yeah. And it's it been, I'm going to say about four months mm, and it says really? it's in transit. It says it's at the port, if you will. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so, you know, from clothing to furniture and odds yeah. and ends, Things can take what they take, but... Yeah, and there have been shipping delays, right, yeah. that have attributed to that, and then, like, a couple other things. So mm-hmm. we're, we're currently working with folks still over in the States um, to get that stuff sorted out. Yeah. So once we actually get the stuff, you know, I can obviously talk about that. Yes. Um, but we did ship our dog. Yes. Um, and so <laughs> the original plan was to take the dogs over to bring the dogs over here Mm -hmm. because they're older we knew that we were going to be here for a little bit Mm -hmm. to set up the property all of that kind of stuff and um and they're really close to paul like Mm -hmm. those are his babies okay but before we got here we had to put ranger down which was our rhodesian ridgeback and his breed is from south africa Wow. so that was a little you know disheartening because like he was my boy i was close to him you know he was great um but you know they were also older right mm. like getting up there in age so it's like they're just kind of coming at that point in their in their lives so was that the reason why you had to put them down mm. on that side or was it because they couldn't come no he, he, couldn't he come got on this sick side. okay he got okay. sick okay. yeah he had cancer okay unfortunately wow. and it escalated quite quickly gotcha. um and so we just made the, the decision process. to yes, put ma'am. him down okay. yeah we did also have a cat or i guess i should say i had a cat okay okay <laughs> Um, but his life, he, he was okay. Mm. Um, he was super chill. I like, got along with Ranger, but yes. he didn't get along with Maya, the okay. German Shepherd. Okay. So we had to keep them separate at wow. all times. Wow. So his quality of life was okay, but I was kind of going back and forth about whether or not to bring him. And I thought, I think it might be better for him to be rehomed. And mm. I talk about this on my channel too, yeah. like to have him be with a family, um, where he can just kind of roam around and just like be a cat. All right. Um, and so, and he's thriving as oh, far nice, as I know. So nice. um, he's doing really well. And he's, he's a cool. great little guy. Yeah. Um, so it was down to one. Yeah. And that was Maya. Um, but because of this whole fiasco, right? Like we were supposed to get into this original house within True. a couple months. Yeah. Our stuff was supposed to come within a couple months. Yeah. Which meant that she was supposed to come within a couple of months. Um, so when we left, she was staying with my mother-in-law. Mm-hmm. She stayed with her for about five months. Okay. Which was longer than what we had anticipated. Of course. Um, 
And when it comes to shipping a dog. Talk about it. Truthfully speaking, I would suggest never to do it. <laughs> okay, okay. Don't do it. Like, unless, unless you have the funds for it to, mm. like, just have a first class service deal with it. Okay. Because um, I know that sometimes with making a, you know, international move like this, it can be difficult, especially on your wallet. Yes. Um, so you have to be quite smart about that. Okay. But if you want to make sure that your dog is like really being taken care of, has everything that they need, and all of the things that are required from South Africa mm -hmm. are taken care of, you're going to have to put some money out there. Interesting. Um, so we so were kind of, yeah. Let me ask this. Yes. Because I've heard various stories mm -hmm. of people that have brought their four-legged creatures over, yeah. right? And family members, if you will, whether it's cats or dogs. Mm -hmm. I, that's yeah. why I put it that way. Um, and so one question is, you don't, they don't come with you on the plane? Correct. As you come over? They don't. Correct. That's correct. They don't they come don't. over oh, with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. So then the second part is I've heard that once they do come over, they have like a quarantine period. Mm. Mm, it depends. Okay. I think it depends. She didn't. Oh, as okay. soon as she landed, came right to the house. Okay. Um, so what was the... So how did she come? Well, okay, she had to come later yeah. because the housing situation. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, okay. We, did, we didn't want her to land here until yes. we were established. Because, you know, it's a lot to be with strangers, right? Because she has to be with a handler and everything. Yes. And to be moving from country to country to country. Um, so, you know, you want to make sure that they're comfortable okay. when, they, when they get to where they're supposed to go. Yes. Um, the process was very convoluted. Um, so South Africa, from what I know, mm. is a country that's quite difficult when it comes to bringing pets over. Gotcha. Um, from the tests that they are tested, uh, the things that they're tested for are things that really only exist here. Okay. So most likely a, a dog coming from the States is going to be negative on their tests for the things that they're testing for in, in South Africa. Okay. Um, so that's great. Cool. Yes. But because of the timing, so if you travel within five days of when the pet is supposed to travel, things are supposed to be a little bit easier, but because mm. of that five month yeah. you know, time frame, yeah. things were a little bit more difficult. Okay. So we had to like, we had to crunch time oh. with her and like getting her tests and getting certain forms endorsed and all of that. I mean, some things had to have like a 48 hour return to mm. or turnaround time. Um, and when you're doing this stuff internationally, right, like the time difference is Correct. there, it's kind of a nightmare. Yes. Um, so that's why I'm like, if you don't have to, don't do it. Hello. But, but um, can yeah. they travel with you? Is that, is that a case? No. Mm -mm. Really? Um, no. Okay. So at least from what we know. Yes, yes. Um, Based off of your experience. They, I guess maybe technically they could, but they would be, they're considered cargo. So they yes. would be stowed you know, stowed away. Yeah, 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 but they can't be, even if they're like a small animal, like a cat, they yes. have to still be stowed away Correct. as cargo. Right. So I guess technically they could, yes. but most people probably won't. Gotcha. Um, it, you'd have to really sync up the flight times Correct. and everything with the company that you work with. Yeah, if you go yeah. through one, it's, it's the easiest way to go to ship an animal is to go mm. through a company that deals with all of that. Gotcha. That's the best way to do it. Okay. Um, now, do you have a company that you recommend or based off of what you went through, you still trying to figure out the best one? Yeah. No. Okay. So we use Starwood, Starwood Pet Travel, I okay. believe is the name of it. Yeah. I would recommend them. Um, we did like the middle tier. So not like the cheap, cheap, but yes. not like the super expensive one. Yes. Um, if I could, if I would do it again, I would go for like the top tier okay. because they would basically handle everything. Gotcha. So with what we did, we had to handle taking her to all her appointments. Mm -hmm. But because we weren't there, we mm -hmm. had to depend on my mother-in-law. And of course, the time difference, obviously, that was a factor in mm -hmm. that. But, um, but luckily, my mother-in-law loves dogs. I mean, she's trying to keep her. Okay. <laughs> she okay. was trying I mean, to keep her. After five months, she's going to build a bond. Yeah. You're going to have a relationship. Uh -huh. And exactly. there's going to be like that understanding between <laughs> you and dog and dog mm -hmm. and you, the neighbors and oh you. Because, gosh, you know, yes. you, get, you get a little, you know, you mm -hmm. start feeling yourself. You walk yep. around with a German Shepherd. Yep. And oh, then yes. in the day, like, you start saying, I wish you would. Mm -hmm. oh, <laughs> and, yeah. and so forth and so on. And so I can get that. I can respect that. Shouts out to mother-in-law. Yes. But Yes. For her aid and her willingness to be yeah. a part of the process, right? Yeah. Because it is a process. It is. it is a process at the end of the day of making the move, of getting over here, and you all endured, right? Yeah. So I mean, and I say that with the idea that everybody that makes the move, 
internationally, right? Yeah. Not even specifically to South Africa, but if you move anywhere internationally, it's a process, right? It really it's is. a feat. Yeah. And once you complete it, shouts out to you, right? You endured, <laughs> yeah. you made it, you did all the things, you checked all the boxes, and now you can wusa, right? Yes, you can relax. Absolutely. And the list goes on. And so in the vein of the wusa, if you will, right? Y'all are living in the South now. Yes. And if you follow her YouTube channel, you'll see bits and pieces of her mm -hmm. journey and the things that she does and I see now that you're starting to get into gardening again yes, right yes. because that was something that you did in the states mm -hmm. and now that you're able to you know have some fun have some yeah. peace and, and relax you jump it back in yes absolutely. so like how far in the gardening world mm. do you want to explore here oh gosh um the ultimate goal is to have a homestead type situation right it. So um, I would love to have like goats, chickens, oh. all of that. Um, I don't think we'd have that at this house because okay. we do, we plan on keeping this house just forever. Mm -hmm. um, but we do actually plan on um, hopefully one day, years down the line, um, buying bigger property, but yeah. like more land. More land. Because okay. we want to have, we love dogs. Um, we also want to have the, the farm animals, things like that. Nice. Um, so what we have now, I'm trying to just learn how to grow my own food, yes. right? So just kind of starting with things that are easy to grow. Onions, garlic, potatoes, like root vegetables. Yeah. Um, but ultimately, like, I'm going to get a greenhouse. I'm going to have, like, there's a section um, at the house that will be the gardening mm -hmm. area for, like, vegetable gardening, things like that, the greenhouse, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. Um, but yeah, I want to be able to get to a point where I'm like semi self-sufficient. Yes. I mean, I'll still have to go to the grocery store for some things, yeah, obviously. Yeah. Like I'm not going to be slaughtering a pig. Okay. I'm going to go right to the store okay. and get what I need to get. But it would be nice to know that if I want to make a salad, all of the ingredients are in my are backyard. Right yeah, yeah. So yeah, that kind of homestead semi off the grid kind of lifestyle is, yes. is what I'm looking for. Okay. And the reason for that is because I'm in tech. And also do like YouTube and stuff on the mm -hmm. side. So it's like I'm in front of screens all day, every day. Yeah. And so being outside is a way for me to just unplug. And Literally. so if I can, yeah. <laughs> and if I can do that and also, you know, provide for things for my family or mm -hmm. things that I like to do, which is cooking, then why not? Mm -hmm. So yeah, homes, homestead is, yes. is the, is the plan. Yeah. There's like a section in our pantry that I'm keeping empty solely for like stuff to, to store in there. But that's, okay. that's the ultimate goal. Ah. That's the ultimate goal. Yeah. So you're talking about language, right? You're talking yes. about language largely because if you were to go back on my channel, you would see that yeah, I was into gardening yes. and did that, loved that. And explored and well. the whole world. Yeah, well. no, I have fun, you know, <laughs> and so much so I consumed the yard from the backyard <laughs> to the front yard. Like, I was just out there growing because it's addicting. Yeah. And I think <laughs> the thing about gardening is things take time. Yeah. Right. And we're so used yeah. to things being quick. Mm -hmm. So like when you plant something and you wait for it to grow, it's like, man, like, what's up? Every yeah. day you go out there and I was like, all right, let me just grow something else. Exactly. And, just, and it just, it grew. It grew literally pun <laughs> that way. Um, but all that to say, like, I'm just saying, like, these hands needs to be in some dirt. Yeah. And so, you know, let me know. I, I'll be and, hitting you up for some, for some tips, you know. You know, if, if A, you know, I can bring some things. I can bring some seedlings. Um, because I see them at the stores. And I'm like, man, I wish I can grow. I mean, we're in an apartment. Yeah. So, I mean, that opportunity truly isn't there properly. Yeah. Um, however, you know. We can build. I can I can build but with you the homestead that stuff. you look to <laughs> desire and to have, you know. And so all I'm saying is, Paul and Denise, if ever, <laughs> or excuse me, Paul and D, if ever you all would like my services, just know I'm here for you all. Yes. Okay. I'm talking yes. to you, Paul, as well, because you know, it's your house as well. I'm not just gonna come over and uh, invite myself, but if you were to invite me, I will willingly Yes be there with yes, a smile on my face and ceilings in hand I'm so we can I'm, plant. I'm sure that you can, you know, impart <clears throat> some knowledge because it's like I'm still learning, right? Okay. Like I haven't been able to grow anything from seed okay. properly. It's, it just hasn't germinated. Yeah. But I'm able to propagate like a boss, yes. which is crazy. Which is great. Like I'm growing a pineapple, which mm. is insane. Now, mind you, it's going to take, you know, a couple of years it's just gonna, because yeah. they take a while. Correct. But even just... Being able to see it come from the top of the plant yeah. or the Get top the of the fruit yeah. and then seeing like thick roots yes. growing after a couple of months, I was yeah. like, I haven't killed this yet. Like it's no. clearly growing yeah. and I just, you know, 
continue with that. And then I started growing garlic and onions. Nice. Yep. And then I'm planning on growing like carrots and potatoes. Like, cause those are things that I use every day. Okay. So I'm like, let me start with the things that I'm familiar with, mm. things that are relatively easy to propagate and yes. or grow from seed, which are those, those vegetables. Yeah. And, um, and keep it pushing. But yeah, I just want to have a whole yeah. slew of things. Right, you know what I mean? Right. Um, citrus trees. Like, mm. I mean, you've seen the property. So like yeah, yeah, I have yeah, yeah. Opportunity, opportunity for, exactly. Hello. So yeah, no. I'm, I'm hoping for some lemon trees, you know, it's, okay. it's going to be nice. It's going to be nice. Yeah. I mean, you can do it. Like yeah. you can do all of that. I'm just even thinking through <laughs> the space that you have and yeah. how the things and thoughts that you want mm -hmm. to see how it can actually take place. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, I guess be on the lookout for the <laughs> D and Ricky video where we out there. Yes, the we garden. out there in the garden exploring the opportunity that yes. she has to grow and even plotting the course of it taking place. Because yes. I mean, that's a part of it too, like yeah. the planning and preparation for the garden. Because mm -hmm. I mean, things grow and eat the space that they need. Exactly. Right? Especially growing pineapples, which. Yeah. That was, you know, love hate relationship because you yeah. get one for one, and yes. that thing hurt me. And it takes up space, and yes. it's not the most friendliest mm -hmm. plant that grows because of the stalks and things that grow from it. But yes, exactly. you know, that's the nerdy, fun side of gardening. Yeah, and y'all will see more of that. However, on your channel as well, mm -hmm. you do hauls. Yes. Um, you're you're a baker. Yes. Yes, I love talk, being in the talk to that. Talk to that. You love being in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. What's something that you've cooked here mm. that uh, you didn't cook in the states? Let me start mm. there. Um, there's okay. So I make a yogurt cake. Oh, two things. Okay. A yogurt cake. Wait a yogurt a cake. Minute. Yes. The a yogurt cake. <laughs> it's so good. I'm a bait. I'm a make one, huh. and I'll bring it to y'all, yes. and you'll be like. Scrum did Liam shit. No, no, no. It's we'll so come good. to the palace. Let us come to the palace. <laughs> Let us experience it in an office. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it's a yogurt cake. Like, yes. so it's basic ingredients, right? Like baking powder, um, sugar, flour, salt, you know, yogurt, oil. Hmm. So very basic ingredients that pretty much everybody has yes. in their home. So anybody can make it at any given point in time. Okay. Um, and you can use really any kind of container to make it. It's like really, really basic, but I never made it in the States yes. and it's not like a South African thing. Right, right. Um, but it's just, it's so simple and it's so good. And it's a really great base for, you could make, you could add strawberry, you could add uh -huh. lemon. Like I've added lemon to make it more citrusy. Yes. Um, you can basically do whatever you want yeah, with it yeah. because it's just a really good base. Mm. Um, so I've made that like a ton of times, but the thing that I never ever made before was bread. Okay. And I make bread a lot. I was here. about to say, you've made it quite often. Yeah. I make it every week. I make uh -huh. it once a week. Like, I don't think I, I haven't bought bread from the store in probably like two months. Really? Um, because I just, I You're make it, it every day ah. and it just tastes so good yeah, yeah. when you make your own bread. It takes mm. a while because I use and I use a bread machine. So it's not like I'm putting a whole bunch of work in it. OK, but I have made bread from hand and um, it's just easier with the bread okay. machine. Like yeah, it's just yeah, yeah. easier with the bread machine. It is what it is. Like you just throw everything up in there and then yes. just pop it out and you're good to go. Yeah. Um, but I have made mulva pudding. I haven't made it here oh. yet. I actually made it for the first time in the States. Really? Um, this was after yeah. you visited. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cause I had it from somewhere, I don't know, some restaurant. Yes. And I was like, you know what? I love baking. So let me see if I can make this myself. So I found a recipe and again, same kind of, ingredients that anybody would have to make just kind of like a basic cake mm -hmm. the only thing that's different is like you use apricot jam okay and like you soak it in the um in the cake mm. but other than that it was really easy to make and it was really really good wow really really good wow but yeah like i i cook a lot of things here that we would normally eat like in the states just kind of regular yes. home yeah. cooking nothing too too crazy okay um but if i do find you know recipes here and there that are interesting enough and kind of fit his palate. And I say his palate because he's a little bit more picky than I am. That's me. Um, he's actually very picky, yep. actually. <laughs> yeah, no, that's me. That's me. And Crystal's a foodie as you are. Yeah, and I'll eat everything. And the cook and the baker and thing mm -hmm. as you are. So I'm, I'm seeing the correlation. And yeah. even while going out to eat and different things, I can picture what he had. And mm -hmm. it was, you know, straight and narrow, yep. which is like me. Yes, you yes. Know? Like I try to branch him out a little bit, you right, know, like her. sneak vegetables and things oh, here and there, oh. you know. I'm but not that um, bad. 
<laughs> yeah, it, if I make chili, I'm throwing a whole bunch of vegetables oh, in there. And he'll okay. be like, oh, this is your best one yet. I'm like, I know. And uh, it's nutritious. <laughs> come on, all at the same time. Right? So with her being a baker, right? Yes. With her being a baker, her having a YouTube channel, I want y'all to drop some things in the comments yes, below of yes. things that she should bake, things Absolutely. that she should try, challenges that you would have for her because mm -hmm. she's already done the Melba pudding, mm -hmm. right? And she has this yogurt cake that she does, yes, right? Which very is good. Very it's going to be entertaining to try. Mm -hmm. However, I want y'all to challenge her. Give her some things that she should do. And as you comment, we'll look forward to seeing those yes. things on the yes. channel. And that's something that I do plan on doing more of. Mm. And I want to start cooking things that are like South African stuff. So like one of the first things that I do plan on like filming and, and cooking is making boars boar. So like the sausage okay. yes. and pap and gravy. Because that's like ah. a South African delicacy. It's one of like my favorite meals here. Okay. And like, I love pap. Yeah. I just love pap. It's just so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I want to make that. Okay. Like, so, myself, like, so. do you want to make the sausage itself or are you going to buy it already? No, I'll buy it. In case. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool, cool. It. Okay. <laughs> so, I was just trying to see how far you were trying yeah. to go. Yeah. Like, you, see, I feel like you know me well enough because uh, I am the type of person to be like, okay, how do I make this from exactly, scratch? <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's how the videos are, yes, right? Like she I, in the kitchen you do it. talking it through. Yes, uh -huh. exactly. Beanie and all, you know what I'm saying? Look, <laughs> look. <laughs> I but love yeah, the it. The pap I'm going to make and yes. the, the gravy because it's like the tomato yep. gravy. Mm -hmm. um, but that was different. That was definitely different. It is different. The tomato, different the tomato base that's used broadly here yeah. is definitely something that caught us by surprise. Yeah. And it's something that we're growing into, which thankfully, Ricky, our son, he mm. loves like ketchup. And okay. so, like, all right, he was good to go. Okay, that's great. Because it's like, boom. But now we know we call it tomato sauce, right? Okay. Like, yeah. it's not ketchup anymore. It's tomato mm -hmm. sauce. But with him, it was a smooth transition. With us, we were like, oh, okay, like... All right, this is heavy on a tomato. This is <laughs> heavy on the tomato paste. Yeah. Cool. Like different, but I understand it, I get it, and I respect it. So you're exactly. right. It's something to, to get used yeah. to. But I love it because okay. something about Jersey, I don't know if you know, mm -mm. their fruit, I guess, is the tomato. So like I am the type that eats tomato every kind of tomato. I used to eat tomatoes like apples. So yes. anything tomato, like I am going. And see, to I don't like tomatoes. Like straight tomato, mm. keep it to yourself. Yeah, that's that's how Paul is. He's, yeah, 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 he's yeah, not yeah. a tomato or onion guy, like oh, at see, all. I do love onions. Okay, yeah. I love onions, you but can't tomatoes. Go onions. Uh, but I eat tomato sauce, you know, yeah. on some things. Yeah. Some fries require or chips, as yes. they call it here. Yes. Requires them, but oh, some, yeah, oh no, they're good to go. Yeah, yeah, they're but good then to go. chip seasoning. I mean, that's uh -huh. something that I've never yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, had. Mm. But we have, we have it in there. Yeah, yeah, the it's, orange one, right? It's so good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So good. Yeah, I was yeah. like, where has this been all my life? Come like, on. You know? Even at KFC. Did you yeah. Have, oh, those fries are good. What? And then they got that package. Oh, my gosh. That's something that is here that is not in the state. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everybody is just ketchup or like sweet and sour sauce or Chick-fil-A sauce. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, But chip sauce, it's like... You you could put your ketchup, your tomato sauce away. Put it like to the side. it's so good. I anytime I make a potato of some kind, yeah, I, it's it's covered in chip seasoning. Come on, like, it's when just you know, that good. when you know, you know, yes. and you can't go back, <laughs> right? Now speaking of in mm -hmm. that vein, right? Yes. What's lingo wise, right? Mm. We we say fries, mm. they say chips, right? Yeah. We say elevator, they say lift. Yes. What's something that lingo? wise that you know you appreciate or that you've taken in here that you'll continue mm. saying now i heard one already and yeah. i'm gonna see if you say it but nonetheless what's something that you know you'll hold with you as you um, go about your way probably yo and okay. haibo ah. um, i do say those like throughout the day yes <laughs> because it's kind of like um like we would say yo or mm -hmm. yeah you know yep. what i mean yeah um also when people say ne that yes. means like, you know, like, right. Like, uh -huh. oh, you know, right. Uh -huh. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Because I used to say that when I was younger oh. in the States. And mm. then when I would hear people here say, I was like, this is just further confirmation. I'm supposed to be, I'm already speaking the language. <laughs> yeah, 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 this is <laughs> You know what I mean? But y'all, like, especially over this past weekend with the camping, mm. y'all was the word. Okay. Like, because it was just, it's just a perfect way to just describe how you're feeling in yes. that moment. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um but of course, like the regular things like Samanani, you know, uh -huh. Johnny, things like that, you know, just as you're kind of greeting people. Yep. I mean, that's just 
you know, hello, how are you and all that. Mm -hmm. um, but even just being able to adopt another language yeah. and just try to have that level of immersion has been fun yeah. and great. You know what I mean? And I'm trying to learn Zulu and okay. all that, you know, I'm, I'm not it's super basic. What you heard me say is what I know. But it's enough. <laughs> it's enough. Like, I mean, you're able to fill in and fit in mm -hmm. and flow. Like, right? I, can, I feel like, and I'm sure that you get this too, like when you guys are out, that you can get the gist of what someone is saying to yeah. you, even if you have no idea what the actual words that mean. Is true. You know what I mean? That is true. Um, like when they ask you if you need a plastic bag, like you pretty much know what they're saying. It's, yeah. You may not be able to recite it yourself, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, Yo and Haibo are like, the ones that I've kind of adopted yes. quite a bit. Okay. Um, and they're super basic, but I feel like they they just work. Yes. They just work. And but, but yeah. the one that you didn't say that I heard mm. you say a couple times mm. and as we're talking is sorted. Right. Mm, sorted, and they say yes. that here and I love sorted. Like yes. I'm like, I'm taking that. Right. Because it just fits. <laughs> it works. It does. And I just love it. It's so much easier and better than saying like we're figure it out mm -hmm. or we'll work it out. Yeah. Or, you know, they're sorted. Mm -hmm. There's arrange, we'll arrange that. Yeah. Uh, I Q love Q is that. another one. Q because we don't use that. We don't use that. Mm -hmm. But Q is another one. I do yeah. love Q. You're mm -hmm. right. Right. Like Terms like that yeah. that are just in the language normally and mm -hmm. casually, I love it. I'm taking yeah. it with me. Um, but nonetheless, in it all, right, as we come to a close with this conversation, you have a YouTube channel, yes, right? I you're do. showcasing yeah. and sharing what you're doing here. What would you say, if you will, mm -hmm. is your overall idea with your YouTube channel and the content that you're putting out while living here? Mm. So, my whole thing is trying to change the narrative around Africa as yes. a continent. So obviously when you start a channel, it's going to be quite personal because yep. you're trying to just learn Figure the lay of the land, all yep. of that, right? Get sorted. Hello. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but for me, I, I kind of want to turn the camera off of me and more on South Africa yeah. and other African countries yeah. because I feel like like there are a ton of YouTube channels from black Americans specifically that talk a lot about South Africa and that's yeah. great in other African countries, yes. but I feel like it needs to just happen more and more and more yeah. because everyone has a different vibe. Everyone has yep. a different element that yep. they bring to their channels. And for me, I bring the good, the bad and the ugly. Yeah. I mean, obviously if people have watched my videos, you already know. <laughs> so I try to keep it real. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like a lot of people show like the fun stuff, which mm -hmm. is great. And mm -hmm. that's obviously a part of my channel as well. But I really want people to see, like, what's the heart of South Africa? Mm. What's the heart of Namibia? What's the heart of Senegal? Like, these are just countries that are, like, on my bucket list. Yes. But, um, but really, like, what makes them tick? What makes them unique? From the food to the people to the traditions, the customs, things like that. And that's ultimately what I want my channel to bring forth. Mm. So, like, in the States... Um, I started with doing um, hauls yeah. for specifically for black and brown owned businesses mm -hmm. because I feel like we don't get enough um, traction behind yes. those businesses. Yep. And I still want to do that here. It's been a little bit difficult trying to figure out like black owned businesses and right. things like that. Yeah, we, we've had that same yeah. struggle with clothing and things like yeah, that. Yeah, it's definitely been a challenge. Yeah. And Surprisingly. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like I want to, I want that to to be what encompasses my channel. I really want it to be about us. So like I refer to people as like the internet family because mm -hmm. that's what it is. I'm trying to build a community yep. from black Americans to like our Arab brothers and sisters to African brothers and sisters, Latin, like all these different communities because because of history, let's yes, just say yes, that, right? Yes. And, um, and I'm hoping that my channel will do that. So mm. we're starting with South Africa and hoping to expand out to other countries on yeah. the continent. No, I love that. I yeah. love that. And I but love... you'll have to see me for a little bit. You know what I mean? Hello, hello. <laughs> it's a part of it. Exactly. It's a part of it. Because as well, as they see you, they get to know you. Exactly. But then as well, in knowing you, they get to then understand the lens in which they're seeing their videos from. Exactly. Because I think, exactly. as you already put it, each channel is specific to the dynamic and the mm -hmm. uniqueness of the people on the channel. Exactly. And so that's the lens that you view the content from. Exactly. And I think 
to your point as well, it's all about changing the narrative. It's all about showcasing yep, the beauty, the people, the culture, the ways of the countries, mm-hmm. right? That we get to be a part of yeah. and showcasing the beauty of the continent itself. And as we travel around the world, right? right? Because there has been thoughts about what's there, no matter where you go, yeah. and what it's yeah. like, no matter where you go. However, at, through our videos, through our vlogs, through our testimonials, through the stories that we share, we get to truly be a part of what's really going on exactly. and let people know what they can be a part of if they so exactly. choose to visit places like South Africa, which is where we're both located. Yeah. So no, I love that. I love that. And I think as we continue to put out content, we continue to put out videos, people don't realize, no, it's really nice. It's really a place to be yeah. and somewhere that they can call home. But even before calling it home, they'll feel like it's home. Oh, absolutely. Even absolutely. at the airport. Yeah, right? And it's exactly. cool you said that because because my parents had that experience at the airport. Oh, that's beautiful. Like, that's awesome. They stepped off the plane and boom, they felt like, oh, this is this is it. Yeah, like, it's like, it's like a literal just your shoulders come down and like I mean, you know, Paul like he's very like security and like yeah, yeah, yeah. self-aware kind mm-hmm. of guy. And so he was like this is the first time in my life or at least in a really long time that I haven't had my head on a swivel. And yeah. I mean, his head is always on a swivel yeah, like yeah. he's Mr. Security. Yeah. So it's like for him to say that means a lot means and just lot. really speaks to the true nature of the people of this country and the country itself. Yep. Yeah, it's got its issues and people complain about it and stuff, just like we complain about the states. But as a black American coming to a very black country, mm. it's it's so different. Mm-hmm. It's just worlds different. And mm. it's like we feel like everybody else. You yep. know what I mean? Yep. And And it's like we blend in, but... It's not like a oh we just feel like we're just a, a cog in the machine. It's more of like we're with fa- we're within family. Mm, That's really what it is. True. And I love our our YouTube channels too because yeah. it's like we're building these communities. We're yep. changing the narrative about yep. South Africa and Africa as a whole and able to just like make connections with people. I think mm-hmm. that's kind of the most beautiful thing about sharing life online yes. is just growing the community and making those connections with people. Like that's that's bar none, like the best part about it, at least for me. No, I agree. I agree because thankfully through YouTube, you get in contact with various people, right? Such as yourself and myself, right? Dr. Asad and us, right? I think thankfully it's through YouTube. Mm -hmm. We knew of their existence and thought to reach out to them. And the list goes on of the various people that you can interact with and come in contact with and experience their life through the screens, no matter what screen you look through. And so I love that. And um, I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, if you could, Mm -hmm. right, say a piece, say a word or give sentiment to the people of South Africa. Mm. Right. You know, this is how I let it all in, because to your point, it's about the people. Yeah. Right. The country is beautiful. The landscape is amazing. Mm -hmm. Uh, The pictures galore. However, at the end of the day, it's all because of the people that are here. Yeah, I would say Um, if there is a word of encouragement Mm. that you can give to the people of South Africa. Right. What would it be? Mm. First off, I mean, I would want to thank the people of South Africa, Um, truthfully, because you have made me and my husband feel extremely welcome, extremely like connected. Um, we feel at home here. Mm. And honestly, my encouragement is to keep doing that because that's what continues to bring us over here, meaning like black Americans. Yeah. Um, it's what, and it's also what keeps us here if we have the means to be able to stay here. Absolutely. Um, So continue being your genuine, amazing, authentic selves, just kind selves, because that's something that we're not necessarily used to. And it may be it may be a little off putting at first, but because typically there's like an ulterior motive. Yes. But here, because of you, you have made us feel extremely comfortable Mm -hmm. and it just feels like home. And Mm -hmm. honestly, thank you to, Mm -hmm. to literally everybody that we've connected to and with here in South Africa. Like you guys have truly made this feel like home and we're trying to get from PR so it can truly be home. Uh (laughs) Hello. Hello. For those that don't know, that's their permanent residence. Exactly. At the end of the day, 
<laughs> so with that being said, we can't say it enough. We love the people here yes, as much as yes. we love the country. And with those that are looking to make the move or even to visit itself, know that you will feel at home, Absolutely. know that you will be loved, and know that you will be cared for because that's what the people here yes. do. And so at the end of the day, with all said and done, there are so many reasons to love SA. However, we shared this time with you to showcase and to share why we love SA. Yes. Make sure y'all go to her channel, Denise Williams. A link will be down below. Not only go, but subscribe to her channel. Yes. Watch her videos. And every video <laughs> that you watch, hit that thumbs up button as it will be an encouragement to her to continue to produce, to continue to share, and to continue to showcase what South Africa and her life has to offer. So until next time, great people, I love you all. I appreciate you all. I truly do. Until next time. Bye. Bye.